Good morning, good morning, good morning, and then welcome again to Allen Temple Sunday morning praise and worship service. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm so glad that the Lord touched me this morning and allowed me to come praise his holy name. Amen. Will you please rise for our morning hymn? Our morning hymn will be found in uh, hymn number 394 in the blue and red hymnals and hymn number 418 in the yellow. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests oft succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Without any further aligning, of course, let us all lift our mighty voices to an almighty God. We are often tossed and driven on this restless sea of time. Somber skies and howling tempests all succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mists have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We'll tell the story how we've overcome, for we'll understand it better by and by. Of the things that life demands Want of food and want of shelter Thirsty hills and barren land We are trusting in the Lord And according to His word We will understand it better by and by All the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land But He guides us with His eyes and we'll follow till we die For we'll understand it better by and by To bleed for a thoughtless word of thee, and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. by understand it better by and by. Oh, heavenly and gracious Father, 
We seek you for the true understanding. We thank you for the understanding that you give us and the ones that you don't. Because sometimes we're not ready to receive it. So Father, we thank you for being an all-knowing, all-loving God. We pray right now, that, that I pray right now, that the blood and love of Jesus touches every heart in this place right now. So that when we leave this place, but never your presence, that we will shine the love of Jesus out on every corner, every street, everywhere. Because that's what this world is lacking right now, is love. Too many people are preaching about Jesus, but don't know how to reside in him. Lord, we preach, we ask you right now for just the blood of Jesus to reign over all of us. Because it is love what we need right now. And we know that Jesus is love. And we thank you for your son. In his name we pray. Amen.
gonna give the Lord some praise. Anybody gonna say yes this morning? He, he is worthy to be praised. The Bible says, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, our God is worthy. Somebody shout, He's worthy. I, I, I wish you'd just go ahead and worship God this morning. He's worthy to be praised. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let me give you a couple of quick announcements. Vacation Bible School will be held from July the 25th to the 29th. Volunteers are needed to be class teachers. See Reverend Alders in the vestibule after the church. He has a signed up sheet. Listen, we are scheduled to be in the parking lot for the month of July. Y'all ain't saying amen to that, huh? Some of y'all say, Reverend, it's already hot. And I'm going to make a statement, and I pray that those of you who understand this statement was already made before you said something to me this week or this morning. The first Sunday of July, Stordes, I need you to listen. I just told Miss Sue that a few moments ago. We're going to be inside because the audiovisual, somebody shouted amen in the back because the audiovisual will be short-handed and they won't have enough people to be able to run an outdoor service, okay? So the first Sunday in July, we will be inside, but it's four more Sundays. Is this mic on? I said it's four more Sundays. Um, how many know that even though it's hot outside, God is still worthy to be worshipped? Now somebody said, well, we can worship him inside, and gas is $25 a gallon. I do understand that. And so we're going to have old-time church. I mean, you're going to have to cut your car out, bring your lawn chair. Now, if you decide to not come from the month of July, we'll, we'll see you in August or whenever you get back. You know, I've learned from my 15 years here that whoever's with you, they're with you. The folk who's not with you, they're not with you. You go on and do what the Lord tells you to do, and then you'll be able to look back and say, look what the Lord has done. I know I put you young people on the spot all the time. But we got them because of parking lot service. And I'm going to keep having parking lot service till we get 10 or 20 more just like them. Is that all right? How many blessed folk do we have in the house today? God tells us at the beginning of the week to take a portion of our goods, set them aside as a show of faith unto him. Those of us with spiritual sins know everything we have belongs to God. We pay our tithes and offer. We're not doing God a favor. Being faithful to a God who's been better to us then we know how to be to ourselves. But what a gracious God we serve. It says if you just be faithful, I'll open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that's too much for you to receive as our ushers come now.
again church this morning scripture will be found in the book of Acts Acts 28 1 through 3 Acts 28th chapter verses 1 2 and 3 and I'll be reading from the New International Version and it reads once safely on shore we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. The word of God for the people of God. All praises be to God. You may be seated.
Let us pray. I am thine, O oh Lord. I've heard thy voice and I told thy love for me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and have a closer walk with thee. So draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw us nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Let the words of my mouth, meditation in my heart, be holy and acceptable in thy sight. For you are my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said amen. If you can't stand, and we ask that you would. And today for some reason, Miss Joyce, let me th thank you publicly. You, you sang my mama song. Come on, put your hands together for it. That, that, that's a mighty good song she sang this morning. I almost wish y'all would have sang that right before I preach. You know, you always try, Nate, to bring your best to the pulpit, but today your brother's a little off. A little bit more off than usual. And I just need some folk who want to pray with me. Ain't nothing wrong, I'm just off. <laughs> Amen. Go with me to Acts chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. Acts chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. You'll find these simple words in the New International Version. It says, once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper, a snake, driven out by the heat, fastened itself to his hand. When the islanders saw that the snake was hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be a murderer, for though he escaped the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up and suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and says, he must be a god. I'm gonna start right there, I want you you may be seated in the presence of God and I want to preach to you just for a few moments from the subject, he's in there. Saints of God, I stopped by this morning to tell you the devil is real. Saints, the devil is wicked. He's mean, he's evil, and he's shown himself to be lethal in this world. Saints, be clear, the devil is not a figment of our imagination. The devil is not a fable. He's not a fairy tale, nor is he fiction. Somebody needs to know today the devil is real. He's not an illusion, but he is violent and relentless and vindictive in this world. How many know today the devil is real? The Bible describes him as a liar and a deceiver. In fact, it calls him the accuser of the brother. The Bible says that the devil is the adversary, a person who is committed to be against the agenda of Almighty God. But saints, not only is the devil real, uh, somebody needs to know today that our God is real. And you and I are saved today and we are alive today because of the indwelling of our God. Now, saints, be clear. God's presence in our lives does not exempt us from demonic attacks. 
No, as wonderful, Miss Sue, as salvation is, it will not prevent the enemy from personal attacks and personal assault on our lives. And saints, don't miss this. Just because you love God, it doesn't mean your life will be trouble-free. Because, saints, you and I live in a hellish and hateful world that prides itself on following Satan. Saints, in this sin-sick society that we live in, the devil is always on the attack. How many know today he'll attack your peace? He'll attack your dignity. If you let him, he'll attack your joy. He'll attack your health. He'll attack your culture. He'll attack your children. He'll attack your community. The devil is on the attack. He'll attack the church. He will even attack our families. Oh, saints, I come to tell you the devil is real. And saints, today you and I live under a satanic system. And the only way for you and me to survive is to have the powerful presence of God inside of us. Uh, it is the only way uh, you and I can live this life and not go crazy uh, it's the only way we can make it through uh, brother preacher and not go insane uh, it's the only reason some of us uh, haven't gone cuckoo for cocoa puffs uh, yes uh, the only reason some of us have not lost our mind uh, is because we've had God on the inside uh, saints if you're going to make it through this devilish world uh, wave your hand if you know you got to have have God uh, on the side of you. Uh, Saints, it's in the text. Uh, Paul was on his way to Rome to stand trial uh, before Caesar. See, Saints, in the text, Paul has been charged uh, as being an enemy of the state uh, because he dared to preach Jesus uh, as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Uh, and Saints, in ancient Rome, uh, there was no king but Caesar and there was no Lord but the Emperor. Saints, Paul was sent to Rome uh, to stand trial, uh, but his journey to Rome was very turbulent. Uh, any Bible readers in the house? Uh, Saints Paul with some prisoners were on a ship uh, and they sailed uh, into a violent storm uh, and the ship was wrecked. Uh, and Paul along uh, with other prisoners uh, with the guards and crew members uh, ended up on the island of Malta. But although Paul had made it through the ship being wrecked, uh, he ended up in the story being bitten uh, by a poisonous snake and saints I don't want you to miss this today Paul made it through the storm on the sea Paul made it and reached the land without drowning but while he's sitting by a fire trying to get warm after a cold rain he's bitten by a poisonous snake but Paul makes it through this incident too and you want to know why somebody say why preacher because Paul made it through because he had God on the inside. And somebody needs to hear this this morning. If you're going to make it through the storm and the life-threatening events on your life's journey, you're going to need to have God inside of you. Saints, be very clear. Along life's journey, the devil will attack you. Along life's journeys, you will have some storms in your life. Just keep on living and you will have some shipwreck situations and Satan will send some people to poison you in an attempt to kill you but if God is inside of you you will make it and saints I love the witness of our ancestors because no matter what our forefathers and our foremothers went through because they had God on the inside they always declared I got a feeling uh, that everything uh, is going to be all right. Uh, but since the question today is uh, how 
how are you and I uh, like the Apostle Paul uh, how are we going to be able to take all the devil is going to throw at us uh, and keep going uh, I come to tell you it's going to take some God uh, inside of you uh, now listen uh, you super sanctified uh, overly pious people uh, listen and listen well having God inside of you uh, does not make you almighty God uh, nor does having God inside of you uh, make you become a little God it just means God lives inside you uh, and his presence gives you the power to make it through uh, some devilish situations uh, oh I feel like preaching now uh, uh, me and my deacon you ready <laughs> listen let me give you three quick points and then we are gonna shout our way out of here uh, First of all, when you have God inside of you, uh, the first thing it does uh, is God will get, will absorb the poison that was meant to kill you. Uh, and saints, don't kid yourselves. Uh, it's not you. Uh, do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not you. Uh, but it is God uh, in you uh, that kept you during the roughest uh, and the toughest and hardest times of your life. Uh, oh, I thought y'all be shouting right there. Uh, saints, there are some enemies that would have defeated you and me along the way. Some of us would be dead sleeping in our grave, but the Lord kept us. There were some trials that would have taken us out, but God sustained us. There are some situations that should have, have us dead, but the Lord would not let them kill us. And listen to this. God did not stop whatever it was was uh, for coming to you or me uh, but what God did uh, is he's fit you and me uh, to endure whatever it was uh, and saints when you have God inside of you uh, he insulates you uh, saints look at Paul uh, he survived a shipwreck uh, he made it to shore without drowning uh, the people of Malta liked him and they were being unusually kind and nice to him uh, and it finally appeared that Paul uh, was in a safe environment uh, but out of nowhere uh, while he was gathering some timber uh, and brush for the fire uh, a poisonous snake jumped and caught him by the hand uh, and bit him and tried to kill him uh, and somebody here today uh, you just came through a storm uh, but you better beware uh, because the devil is still present uh, and he's planning something else uh, all saints uh, you can be in a place uh, that you can consider safe. Uh, I might well preach myself happy. Uh, you can be with friends and families. Uh, you could even be with the saints of God uh, only to find out uh, that it's a satanic uh, environment. Uh, and how many know that all of us uh, have some snakes in our lives? Uh, do me a favor. Uh, look up and down your row. Uh, look behind you. There's some snakes in your area. Uh, I want to see if you can figure out who they are. Uh, there's some snakes on your job. Uh, there's some snakes snakes in your community uh, there's some snakes in your family uh, and there's some snakes right here in the church uh, who will try to get close to you uh, as soon as they get a chance uh, and become your so called friend uh, and then guess what uh, when you're not looking uh, they'll bite you uh, saints listen uh, some snakes will date you uh, and still bite you uh, some snakes will marry you uh, and still bite you uh, some snakes will hug and kiss up on you uh, and still bite you uh, listen some will even uh, wash up right beside you uh, but before you get to the parking lot uh, they'll bite you uh, and saints uh, God will not always uh, prevent the snake uh, from biting you uh, am I preaching to anybody uh, but he will prevent them from poisoning your situation uh, saints listen uh, the Bible says uh, no weapon uh, for Formed against me shall prosper. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And know this, it's not going to prosper because no matter what the enemy does, God going to still bless you. He's going to still elevate you. He's going to still promote you. No matter how much poison your snakes may 
spew. Uh, Saints, look at the text. Uh, after the snake bites Paul, uh, the natives are looking for and waiting for Paul to swell up and kill over. Uh, but the poison never affected Paul's functions. Uh, in fact, when the snake bit Paul, uh, he just simply got up, uh, walked over to the fire, uh, and just shook the snake off. Uh, and why? Uh, because saints, when you got God on the inside, uh, snakes may bother your flesh. Uh, God help me preach. Uh, but they can never shake your faith. Uh, do me one more favor. I know I'm making you work today. Uh, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm looking right at you. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Uh, whatever poison your enemy is spewing, uh, just shake it off. Uh, every lie, uh, shake it off. Uh, every gossip, uh, shake it off. Uh, every rumor, uh, just shake it off. Uh, every false allegation, uh, go on and shake it off. Uh, am I preaching to anybody? Uh, every plot and plan, uh, every setup they got for you, uh, just shake it off. Uh, every two-faced phony Christian, uh, don't get mad at them. Uh, don't cuss them out. Uh, just shake them off. Uh, saints, keep on living uh, and you will suffer from some bites, uh, from some two-legged snakes uh, that are meant for your demise. Uh, but when you got caught, on the inside he will absorb the poison that's meant to kill you but secondly not only when you have God inside of you will he absorb the poison that's meant to kill you but he will help you deal with fickle people since whether whether they're in the world or whether they're in the church how many know people are fickle you know what fickle is, don't you? Uh, fickle means to change frequently uh, as in regards to loyalty and affection. Uh, anybody besides me uh, know you got some fickle people uh, in your life? Uh, anybody besides me ever had to deal with some folk uh, who with you one minute uh, but they're against you the next minute? Uh, Say, can I take you honest? Uh, Say, go on be honest, preacher. Uh, I can't stomach fickle people. Uh, I, I told you before. I don't need people to try to feel for me what they really don't feel. All I need to know is how you feel and I'll conduct myself accordingly and saints, when I find out somebody's phony and two-faced and fickle, I just pray for them and leave them alone. And saints, don't trust people who are with you one minute but you can't find them the next minute. Listen, I want all the fickle people around me to keep that same energy you had when you were putting me down. Put the, keep that same energy you had when you turned on me. Keep that same energy you had when you were with that other crowd talking about me. Because I don't mess with people who practice a limited loyalty. I don't mess with folk who show me that they are double agents. I don't mess with folk who change like the weather. But saints, look at Paul. Paul was putting some fire uh, on the on the pile uh, he, he, he was helping the people to stay warm uh, but while it was while he was trying to help uh, he got bit uh, and see saints in the text uh, the heat draws Paul closer uh, the heat draws uh, the people closer uh, but it also draws the snake closer too uh, and somebody needs to hear that again uh, it, it's when you're trying to do the right thing uh, that snakes will lash out at you uh, it's when you're trying to be faithful uh, that you will be betrayed uh, and the snakes will come out uh, and don't fool yourself uh, I don't care where you work uh, I don't care where you work out uh, I don't care who your family is uh, I don't care where you live uh, there are some snakes uh, the devil makes sure of it uh, and listen snakes will come for you uh, some St. John some Brook, and some Brooks brother wearing snakes uh, some red bottom and Italian loafer wearing snakes uh, some religious snakes uh, some bible toting snakes uh, some wig and weave wearing snakes uh, how many know some single snakes uh, and some married snakes uh, but saints whether uh, the snake wherever the snakes are uh, God will show you how to deal with them uh, saints listen uh, from the beginning of time uh, God's people have always uh, had to deal with some snakes uh, snakes will cause you to turn on your loved ones uh, 
and they will cause you to turn on God. Adam and Eve messed up uh, paradise uh, and got kicked out of the Garden of Eden uh, messing around with a snake. And Saints of Malta uh, was a snake infested island. And the natives uh, had seen many people uh, be bitten by snakes and die. And when Paul got bitten, the first thing the natives said uh, to one another is, uh, no doubt this man is a murderer because he escaped the sea but the goddess justice has not allowed him to live. So the natives sat back and waited to see the bite take Paul out. But saints can I tell you this and then I will go sit down when God is in you when God is on your side even when the snakes bite you if God is in you you won't swell up you won't die and the bite will not take you out oh y'all might well come on help me Things. Uh, the natives were celebrating with Paul uh, until he got bid. Uh, uh, but they turned on him uh, as soon as they seen the snake hanging from his head. Uh, and somebody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, people thought a lot about you uh, until you got sick. Uh, uh, people were on your side uh, until you went through a divorce. Uh, some people were riding with you uh, until you had some drama uh, in your life. Uh, some people uh, came came to see you every day uh, until you had tragedy uh, and then their real feelings about you came out uh, and that's why you need God on the inside uh, because God will help you uh, deal with fickle people uh, I'm on my way to my seat uh, uh, but let me give you this last point uh, how many of you know uh, you need some God in you uh, and if you know when you got God inside of you uh, the first thing God will do uh, is he will absorb the poison uh, that was meant to kill you uh, is there anybody besides me uh, that God has absorbed some poison uh, that was meant to take you out uh, but not only uh, will he absorb the poison that's meant to kill you uh, he'll help you deal uh, with some fickle people uh, Donna honey just keep on living uh, Stephanie just keep on living uh, and you're going to deal with some fickle people uh, but I come to give you this last point uh, when you got God inside of you uh, uh, can I see your hands. Anybody got God inside? Uh, he'll help you to survive. Uh, anybody besides me know uh, that without God's mercy uh, and without God's grace, uh, you would not have survived some things. Uh, and saints, listen, uh, faith behold, befalls all of us. Uh, but remember when God is involved, uh, faith is not final. Uh, like Paul, uh, some folk in the house uh, have lived through some things and now you are a living testimony. Is there anybody here who can testify about how the Lord brought you through some situations? Some of us have gone through some stuff. Don't kid yourself while you were going through. Yes, there were some people praying for you. Yes, there were some people cheerleading for you. But there were also some people who were sitting back in the cut step saying it's over for her it's over for him they're done but that's when God stepped in and let the devil know this is my child and I'm going to bring him through is there anybody here besides me who's ever had to face some danger but God brought you through anybody been through something that was harmful but today you can stand and give God a hallelujah. Is there anybody here who's gone through some pain but now you can stand and give God praise? Are there any survivors in the house? Are there any people in here with a testimony about God's goodness and about God's grace? And I'm going to stop right here. But if you're truly saved today, you got God inside of you. And I want you to know this when you got God inside of you you can make it so when you're testing trials come to get you down and your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found 
There's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And when your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. Because no matter what comes my way, my life is in his hands. Oh, some of y'all don't know that song. Somebody's been bitten today, but I have a word from the Lord. What's the Lord, preacher? Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you if you believe he will if you trust him he will if you put your faith in him he will how many know today he will take care of you if you got God on the inside come on help me close this thing ain't he good ain't he grand ain't he alright somebody shout yeah now put your hands together and give the Lord the word of God is just not for the people of God But it's for those who are outside of the safety of God. I heard a preacher, Donna, the other day on TV said, that nowhere in the Bible does it say people have to confess their sin. Romans 10 and 9 says exactly that. If you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Then later Paul would say confess your faults, confess your sins, your shortcomings, your flaws, one to another. If you're watching today or you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. I invite you now to come give the preacher your hand, but to give God your heart. For those of you who are watching, there's a number that will come across, and if you need somebody to pray with you, please call that number. We understand that some members from now on are going to be virtual. Some are still concerned about COVID-19, and COVID-19 has not gone away. Let's be clear. Others, because of comorbidities, need to stay away. I mean, they will put their life at risk being in a group like this. The truth is, some just like getting out to bed, going to their table, getting their coffee and their breakfast and watching it. There's nothing really wrong with that, but the Bible does say, forsake not the assembling together. The reason why I want to caution people about that is this. If you've ever gone through a moment of depression, you ever gone through a point where anxiety in your life is out of control, I've been through that. What the devil will do is he will try to isolate you. He wants you to stop praying the prayers that you've been praying that have worked for you all of your life. He wants you to get away from people who are going to encourage you, especially encourage you in the Lord. And how many know sometimes you don't need somebody to encourage you in the Lord. You need somebody to just tell you to get up and take a shower and Quit complaining and get yourself together and come on, we going out to lunch and sometimes you just need, but the enemy is a dirty fire. 
No, Satan is a dirty fighter. And what he wants to do is isolate you by yourself. And we want you to know, here's my second call. There's a church here that wants to journey with you. There's a pastor here, stewards and trustees here, men and women of God here who want to journey with you. Life is such a changeable thing. You can be up today, down tomorrow, down today, up tomorrow. Sometimes you can go through a season you don't know what to expect the very next moment. But we thank God for his Holy Spirit, the comforter. Then when we don't know what to do, the Bible says he becomes a teacher for us. And he brings back to our remembrance everything the Lord has said to us. I'm going to say this and then we're getting ready to, I'm going to have prayer. Um, I had a mother in my office this morning. We were really talking about something else, but she's concerned about a child. How many mothers in here? Let me see the hands of mothers. Mothers, what wouldn't you do? for your child to be safe. What wouldn't you do for your child to be healthy and happy? One of the things that happens in any organization, and Allen Temple is no different, is that when things are going really well, or really bad, the enemy will show his face. I was reading something last night that kind of struck me. This was from an ant expert. He said, if you take a hundred black ants and a hundred red ants and put them in a jar together, nothing will happen. They will get along with each other, they'll work along with each other, and they will consider themselves to be co-laborers. But then he said, if you just take the jar and shake it, he says, then the ants will begin to kill each other. Because the red ants will think that the black ants are responsible for the shakeup. And the black ants will think that the red ants are responsible for the shakeup. Before you start fighting each other over petty things, find out who's shaking the jar first, all right? Now, if you leave here today talking about what was Pastor talking about, I wasn't talking to you. But the folk I'm talking to know I'm talking to them. Listen, I want y'all to pray for me. I'm going to deal with people that look like y'all for the next two days. <laughs> Melly, I'm going to your hometown. I'm going to tell the town I, I, I'm that, that what's, what's your maiden name? She Mella Sweat sent me. She's my little sister, so that get me carte blanche wherever I want to go. Because I'm an honorary member of the Sweat family. I'm going to go down here and listen to this, about this $90 million that's still missing. I don't know why they keep looking for it. They know it's gone. Y'all know it's gone, and I know it's gone. Tell your neighbor it's gone. Um, I told y'all I'm, I'm, I'm married to an older woman. <laughs> On Tuesday, 
she gonna turn 59. I ain't gonna be 59 till September. I, I thought I would preach about red bottoms because she told me, I know what I want for my birthday. This is a place called the Lenox Mall. I don't like Lenox Mall. I ain't never been there and I don't like it. She told me I want some red bottoms. And I pointed out the ones I want. Now, Will, I'm trying to help you, son. When you ask that girl how much they cost, and she say she don't know, she lied, she lied. Because it's when, when it's your credit card, they don't never know how much it costs. She'd know if it was her credit card. But then after that, I'm taking the girl I love. Been my girlfriend for a long time. We going to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Yeah. I called some of my friends in here and asked them about it. They said, oh, it's a nice place, Rev. And then I was talking to a young person. They said, why are you going there? That's for families and old people. I said, well, I fit in that group. I'm old people. I don't know about y'all. I don't go nowhere where that 20 and 30 something year old crowd hang out. If they hang out there in numbers, I try to avoid that place. They get to shoot and I can't run fast enough. Fran can't run fast enough. You know I got to stay and save her. Mm. And I ain't never been shot, but bullets just look like they hurt. You ever see people get hurt, shot? They just look like they hurt. Listen. Nobody else tells you they love you this week. Alphonse and Francis and Allen love you. A lot of reasons why we love you. But most of all, we love you today just because you're the people of God. <clears throat> Before I give this benediction, I want to give this prayer for this mother. Oh God. We just thank you that you allow sinful creatures like us to approach your throne of grace. We declare we're not worthy, but you are such a gracious God that you allow us to come to you with our cares and our concerns. You listen to our prayers then you change our situations. I lift this mother up to you right now. The doctors don't know what to do, but God, you do know what to do. We declare you still have more healing in the hem of your garment than all of the medical science in the world. So I speak peace to a mother's heart right now. I speak peace to her child right now. She will, God, we declare, through your glory, that she will come in this place and give you praise along with other mothers and say, look what the Lord has done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. People of God said, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen.